Hey, it's David Johnston from Smudge Cat Games here again. I thought I'd make another Gateways video, uh, showing off some of the uh, the different things in the game, some of the things that actually help you throughout the game, because I know a lot of people seem concerned that the game is going to be really overly complicated, given all the different types of gateway guns and all the different combinations of, of puzzles. Uh, and I'd like to show that that's not necessarily the case. You um, acquire these power-ups sort of gradually throughout the game. You see at the moment I've got the um, I've got a basic gateway gun and that other one's the, the scaling gateway gun. Um, so as you acquire power-ups, you basically have to use them uh, in several puzzles before you can progress and find the, the next one. So all, all, all these things are introduced quite gradually throughout the game. Uh, one, one of the things I wanted to show actually was um, how you aim the, the gateway gun and the, and the PC using the mouse because I thought a number of people found it quite unintuitive uh, when, they, when they played the demo. Uh, it initially it previously worked in the demo where you, you moved, you couldn't see the mouse cursor on screen, but moving the mouse up and down uh, moved Ed's arm up and down, which people didn't really seem to like. Uh, so I've now changed it so you can see the mouse cursor on screen. Uh, and as you move it around, basically Ed aims towards wherever the mouse cursor is pointing, which seems to be what people wanted. So if I aim up there, I can place a gateway up in the ceiling. If I aim down below Ed, then he can place one on the floor. And hopefully um, that, that's a much easier to, to work with for people. One of the things about it as well was that, you, um, that the camera could pan around as you were trying to aim before. Uh, and I've changed this now so that the camera always remains static as, as you're panning around. But if you do need to aim at something which is slightly further away, like if I'm aiming over here, I can't actually see what wall I'm aiming at. If you're aiming over there, then you can actually hold down R and the camera will pan over towards where you're aiming uh, and it will stay fixed in that location until you let go of R again. So it lets me sort of look over to a different part of the map and aim specifically there. So if I want a gateway right on the edge of that ceiling there, I can aim quite easily towards that. And then as soon as I let go of R, it will ping back to Ed. So yeah, I can aim down here using R as well. So it lets me aim across the different parts of the map um, without hopefully having the, the view jerking around a lot, which I think people found with the, the previous version. So that's how the uh, the aiming has changed. Uh, the one thing that I did want to show in this video was the uh, the help points in the game. Uh, I'll just put my torch on here. This is actually the, the basement section uh, of the map, so it's quite dark down here, but Ed finds a, a torch as one of the power-ups throughout the game, which helps him light the way so he can see what's down here. Um, so these help points you get beside every sort of puzzle in the game, basically, every obstacle that you can't get past, there'll be a help point beside. So this help point is referring to this door here. Um, so if I stand beside it, you see it's got a name, it's called Metal Corridor. Um, so what this lets me do is, rather than spending a lot of time experimenting, seeing if I can actually solve this puzzle somehow, if eventually I, I can't really decide whether I can solve it or not, this help point will basically tell me whether or not I can solve the puzzle given the power-ups that I've got at the moment. So to do that I need to spend 10 power-ups, which I've got 220 of up here, so I've got plenty. So if I buy that, then it actually tells me straight out that I need to find something else to finish this puzzle. There's no point actually carrying on with it. I'll just need to come back to it at some point. So if I look at the, the map, these help points are, are indicated on the map here. So that's the one that I'm right beside now. So it tells me that this puzzle can't actually be solved at the moment. It's a, a red help point. There will be others dotted around. There's another red one over here. So it's another puzzle that I can't actually solve yet. There is one here which uh, I've purchased and I can now actually solve. So if I went back there, I could go and I've obviously got the power-ups I need to be able to solve that puzzle and get up there. Uh, help points which haven't been purchased yet are still shown here, but they're grey. So basically these are puzzles which I don't know whether I can solve or not yet. Okay, so given I need another power up, uh, I'm going to head over here and see if I can find it. It should be over here. Uh, there's a puzzle which has already been solved. If I jump over here. Okay, so this is um, basically coming across the time travel gateway gun. So if I go and pick that up. Okay, so I've now got the three gateway gun types. 
so tell me about the uh, the time travel gateway gun up here. All the uh, tutorials in the game appear in the background. They don't interrupt the flow of the game at all. They, they just appear on the walls. Uh, so you can read them and still mess around and experiment. So this one's telling me to try using out the time travel gateway gun by putting one gateway down here. Um, and then tell me to wait for this time bar is just about full before placing down the other one. So now it tells me looking through this gateway is actually looking back in time. So I'm looking back at my past self here. So if I walk back through, then I'm actually travelling back in time uh, to encounter my past self. So he's about to go through again. Okay, so now that I've acquired this power up, uh, if I look at the map, I can see that the red, some of the red help points have changed to green ones. So basically telling me that I can now solve this puzzle. Uh, I can solve this one, which is the one I was previously at, um, but I still can't solve this one. I obviously need to find something else in order to get past that. The next objective is actually up here. Um, so this is the kind of the main focus where I should really be heading. So these other help points obviously lead to either other power-ups or other shortcuts in the map that will help me get around, but they're not essential uh, to actually finishing the game. So in order to actually head back there, I'm going to have to get out of here, but I'm going to have to use the, the time travel gateway gun because this switch is opening this door, but as soon as I step off, then the door closes. So if I use the, uh, the time travel gateway, I can put down one gateway, which is the one that I'm going to appear out of from the future when I put the second gateway down. So I'll stand on this switch the whole time and then put down the second gateway. So I'll then go through and travel back in time to see my past self stood on the switch which lets me walk through uh, into the past and now I can uh, go through that door because my um, past self has stood on the switch. So I'm now going to head back to that puzzle. Okay, so I'm back here now. I can now see that the uh, the help point has turned green, which means that I can solve the puzzle. So I could at this point play around. It's obviously having to use the uh, the time travel gun in order to get through this door. Um, but for the sake of example, if I couldn't figure out how to do the puzzle, I can still spend another 30 orbs uh, and the help point will actually just show me the solution. So if I do that now, buy the solution, let's see I spent 30 power orbs, and press S to view the solution it will actually just play through the, a solution to the puzzle using the in-game engine as though basically you were actually playing it yourself um, basically as though it's, it's replaying key presses so you can see I've used the time travel gateway gun to go back in time and stand on the switch so that I can get through that door so now that I'm through on the other side of the door control has returned to me I've seen the, uh, the solution to the puzzle so now I can drop down here and collect this power up uh, this power-up is actually an extra echo, which is a power-up related to the time travel gateway gun, because you can only travel back in time so many uh, so many times um, before it will stop you. So this actually lets me now create an extra past echo, uh, which can be useful for things like if there's lots of switches that I need to stand on to solve some kind of puzzle. So it should help me be able to access other areas. So that's basically the uh, the gist of how the, the help points work. So hopefully uh, you'll never get completely stuck in the game. Uh, if you ever get, do get stuck in a puzzle, hopefully you'll have enough power orbs to uh, spend and actually just find out the solution. So the uh, the demo of Gateways is still available to download from the, the Smudge Cat Game website. Uh, you can also pre-order the game there as well. Thanks for watching.